of GT Racing on a very demanding 1.9 mile road course in Portland, Oregon. Stand by for racing. Beautiful day we have in the Pacific Northwest. A cool breeze is blowing and hardly a cloud in the sky. Good afternoon, everybody, and welcome to Portland International Raceway. We have some GTS, GTU, and GTO racing for you today. Down the GTS division this year, it's been a battle all season long between Oldsmobile and Nissan. Now, Nissan does lead the manufacturer standings there. Chevrolet is third, Ford fourth, and Pontiac fifth. But Oldsmobile has a brand new car for this race. And Derek Daly, who'll be joining me in the booth today, that car is on the pole, driven by Darren Brasfield. That's right. All season long, it's been very much an on-track battle between these manufacturers to try and win this championship. Now, at the start of the year, Nissan with a returning experience team. Good drivers, very good cars. Very much the firm favorites to take the championship. However, this new team with Oldsmobiles run by Rocket Sports are very, very fast. Just coming off a great win last week at Laguna Seca. And this new car, as you mentioned, is potentially even faster than the car that was successful last weekend. So, for all intents and purposes, the championship may be about to start in earnest right here this afternoon at Portland. Well, the Jack Roush Ford team has not been a regular participant in that series this year, but they are here today. And with more on that, let's go to Pit Road and Marty Reed. Well, thanks, Bob. The wild card in this mix is Robbie Gordon. He has not driven in this series since Daytona at the 24 hours and not in this particular car since Del Mar of last year. Now, his supporters call him the most exciting driver to come along in years. His critics call him a kamikaze pilot with no discipline. He knows that Darren Brasfield on the pole is out in front of him. He's in row three, and he can't afford to let Brasfield get away. So don't be surprised if you see the number nine Whistler Ma Mustang make a wild move heading into turn number one. There's two other classes of racing action here today. With that story, here's Rick DeBruel. Well, Marty, like you say, two classes, actually three classes within one race. The other two classes are GTO and GTU. GTO, big engine, sophisticated cars, well, less sophisticated perhaps than the GTS. The two main players in this, Irv Hare and the Oldsmobile, Les Lindley and a Camaro. Irv Hare leading the points championship at this point, point in time. Lindley, though, won the last race. They're paired up side by side on the grid. They should be a good battle to watch. The other division in this, it's GTU. Smaller engines, these cars aren't quite as fast, but they're pretty quick on this particular track. The main players in this one are Nissan and Dodge. Nissan, David Loring is the points champion so far. He's leading, but he's having a hard time in this division. The man to watch, though, in this one is going to be John Fergus. He's in the Dodge, and he should be running away with it. All right, thank you, Rick. The cars are on the track for the to ESPN Speed World. On hand today at Portland International Raceway, we're getting set for Exxon Supreme competition. Let's take a look at this racetrack. It's 12 turns, 1.95 miles in length, and Derek, these festival corners are the ones that are giving drivers fits. And they're highlighted here in yellow. They were put here to give a legitimate passing zone to this great racetrack, and it has done that, provides tremendous fireworks, but top speeds here are in excess of 170 miles an hour. The diehard starting grid, Darren Brasfield, the pole sitter, in excess of 100 miles an hour in the Oldsmobile. Starting alongside will be Steve Millen in the Nissan at 99.076. In the second row, it's Paul Gentilosi and Jeremy Dale, then Robbie Gordon and Herb Hare. We take a look at the rest of the starting lineup as the field moves through ten, turns number 11 and 12. We're just moments away from the start of this event. We'll go one hour in length, and there is indeed the green flag and the this race is on. Brassfield is to the left, and Millen is to the right as they head down this main straightaway and into the festival corners for the first time. It's a side-by-side -side battle into the festival corners as Millen and Brassfield side-by-side, -side. but now Millen gets the advantage as Brassfield gets the rear wheels off the track. Brassfield was on the dirt. Look at Jeremy Dale trying to go around the outside, and Jet Losey slips down the inside. So Brassfield goes from first to fourth. Darren Brasfield loses four positions from his pole-setting spot. And now Steve Mellon is the leader. Here comes Gentilosi in third. That's Brasfield in fourth. And Robbie Gordon in that red and white Ford is running in fifth position. A great start by Steve Mellon. He took the initiative to go down the inside after they went round the first right-hander and took that line from Brasfield and made it very difficult. And we saw Brasfield actually run wide on the dirt, but Millen leads from Jeremy Dale. Speeds here, what, about 170 miles an hour before 100, breaking? 170 miles an hour, this is the fastest section of the race track, but look at Robbie Gordon here in the Mustang. 
didn't qualify that well, broke a CD joint. Uh, Four-cylinder turbocharged car here, expected to give these boys a good run. Look at Brasfield. Yeah, Brasfield wants third place back from his teammate Gentilosi at the end of the straightaway. Robbie Gordon also making a move. Uh, Brasfield is going to have third. Robbie Gordon moves to fourth, and Gentilosi falls back to fifth position. And this is a camera we have mounted on the right rear wing of Paul Gentilosi, who's now running in fifth position. And did you see the way Robbie Gordon's car bobs and weaves under braking? It's so difficult to pass somebody under braking, but we're now we're at the infield double right-hander, and you can see what goes on here. This is a great view from this rear-mounted camera that we have. But Robbie Gordon is just ahead. The two Nissans, though, still lead. Indeed, it is Steve Millen still leading with Jeremy Dale in second position. Brassfield has moved to third. Robbie Gordon fifth. And Paul Gentilosi, on whose car we are now riding, are in fifth position as they go down the long back stretch once again. Now, there is Brassfield, and it appears as if he's closing in on second place Jeremy Dale. Closing in, particularly under braking. We're in the early lap, so tires are over just about up to working temperature here, but Jeremy Dale now right behind him is Brasfield. Then it's Robbie Gordon and Gentle Ozzy moving back a little bit. Let's see if Brasfield makes a move here. He looks to the inside of Dale at the end of the straightaway. He does indeed move up to second position. So Brasfield, who had the uh, lead, oh, we have a couple of cars off here. This is back in turn number 11. That appears to be the number 15 car driven by Eduardo Pelorano from Santo Domingo. And I believe there was another car off also. The 84 car, another Eduardo, Eduardo Debos, again in a Mazda. They made contact, but all is well. But look at the dust and dirt falling out of the bottom of that car as it goes down this front straight. Both cars are able to keep going. There's the 84 car, and there's the 15. Here it is, back in turn number uh, 10, Derek. Turn 10, watch the Mazda number 15. And watch number 84. Debos gets on the outside, and then Pellerano, I knew I'd pronounce it if I took long enough, <laughs> spins on the inside. Dust and dirt and grass fly everywhere, but both of them do make it back onto the racetrack. There in turn number 10 and 11, but all is well. As Jeremy Dale is in third position, Millen is in the lead, or is he? Here's Brasfield making a move to the inside, and Brasfield gets the advantage just slightly, but Millen fights back and recaptures it. Oh, some great competition here, and Brasfield gets sideways, again getting those rear tires off the track there in the festival corner. Almost the same thing that happened on the opening lap. Steve Millen fought all the way to the left-hander. Brasfield was on the outside, sticks those rear wheels on the dirt, and doesn't get the job done. But Steve Millen hanging on for all he's worth here in the 300 ZX Nissan with an Oldsmobile of Darren Brasfield look very, very strong. And Robbie Gordon has taken third position, I believe. Yes, indeed, Robbie Gordon in that Ford has moved to third position. So, Jared, Derek, just as we said at the beginning of the show, it's a Nissan versus Oldsmobile battle here in the early going as Steve Millen has the lead in the Nissan and Brasfield has moved back to second in the Oldsmobile. And under braking, we can see Brasfield is quicker. That's where he's trying to attempt to make a pass on Steve Millen. Millen, remember, turbocharged car. Leads up this front straight. They, did, they do believe, though, that this Oldsmobile, Oldsmobile has just as much horsepower. And we see our friend number 15 is off the road again. That's Pellerano. Now we see Brasfield working to the outside of Millen. He had taken a couple of positions at that point on the track the last couple of laps, but does not make an attempt this time. Now he will. Makes a bid as they come out of the festival corner. Still cannot take the lead away, however, from Steve Millen, the leader of the race tried to get round the outside. Millen was slow into the festival turns because he was protecting his position. Made Brasfield trying around the outside, but this is a safe haven right here for Steve Millen because on these double apex corners on the infield, it is almost impossible to make a clean pass. Robbie Gordon in the Whistler Ford now runs in third position. 